Welcome into the Friday, May 26, 2023 installment of Market Plus. Joining us again, Sean O'Leary. Sean, good to have you back. Thank you, Paul. Yep. You always have to, you're always hesitant, I can tell, when I'm asking you a question. You really don't know what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I, I, meant to, I meant to start the show by asking no hard questions. No please. hard questions? Yeah. Okay, well, they're not my hard questions. Lighten up, will you? They're from all the people out who watch, <laughs> and that's what we do with Market Plus, are your questions that come in via Twitter and Facebook, and uh, some of these are really good. They are. Um, they are. There's a couple. The, the last question we're going to ask, you're going to want to stick around for this one, but here we go. Let's start with Gary in Wisconsin, shall we? He's asking you on Twitter, what will be the bigger market mover the next two weeks, Sean? Dry weather or the strengthening dollar? Uh, I would tend to say the weather, uh, although we've, we've seen a little bit of that in the market. Uh, we're still so early in the growing season. The, the strong dollar, uh, that has been the case for several weeks now. Uh, but if you, if you look at that market and compare it with the FX Euro, uh, the, I, I think that's that dollar has strengthened the FX euro has given back enough value where that might kind of level off a little bit uh, uh, where th there's no doubt we're gonna start talking about our own weather uh, uh, with with the forecast near term but as I said earlier that uh, at the same time means we're getting things planted on time let's put away commodities for just a moment equities um, and live cattle tend to move somewhat together. The dollar, what's been influencing that? Because globally, we're dealing with now the talk of recession in, I think, Germany, China, always that talk, we're doomed for a recession. What's moving and influencing the dollar's moves right now? Uh, I, would say, I would say China has a lot to do with it. I think that would be uh, a concern if, if they do have some financial pickups, you might say, uh, that's going to have a big effect on that. Um, I, I don't know um, if you're going to see that move, either of those markets, the dollar and the FX euro, move drastically out of the ranges that they've been in, at least for the time being. Okay. I, I'm always curious, the take, and then we could ask another question, but I, I do want to ask, I want to get to corn. Uh, this is something that Sean wanted to talk a little bit more about. This one came via Twitter, AgMeme1. If you ever want to tell me what your real name is, that's always good. Uh, this question, will we see full carry for corn this next crop year? Uh, could very well be the case. I, I would point to how much variance there has been in, uh, in, in the cash market and basis levels. Uh, east and west uh, belt and, and down into the, into the south, and I think that's a reflection of of how much uh, variance there were in places where we were just a little bit short on bushels. So I, I expect that to be the case. Uh, the other thing uh, I think we have to be mindful of is uh, El Nino. The the prospect of that is pretty strong. Uh, and it sounds like that is a later in the, in the summer and into fall event. And if that's the case there, I think we're, we're going to see a lot of variance there too. Uh, you're going to see some areas that are, uh, that the kind of get that greenhouse effect and you're going to have other area, areas that just turn out uh, to when all of a sudden done, said and done lack the moisture that they need. So. That, I think, is going to mean into the fall and, and next spring we have a lot of variance in, in basis levels again. Well, weather is always a topic, and we have another one uh, that came in, another question. Neil in Ohio asked us on Facebook, how many more dry forecasts until the traders put some major weather premiums into the market? And before I let you answer that one, Sean, you mentioned during the, the show uh, Iowa, Illinois, but I was reading some of the weather forecasts, Ohio, Pennsylvania, really Indiana looking like dry is heading for them. Is that part of that El Nino and long-term forecast that you're referring to in your last statement? Uh, I don't think it's probably so much El Nino, just a, a function of that's, that's how we're starting out right now. And, um, you know, both of those markets, uh, I mentioned earlier that I, I think they might be good buying opportunities from the, the point of view that they've lost the value that they have over just past eight and 10 and 12 weeks. And it's coming at a time where if things, 
you know, s stay the way they're forecast, um, you're, you're going to see you're going to see the markets rally a little bit. I would say that if I'm a producer, I'm going to treat the early half of that rally as as kind of a second chance opportunity to get some things marketed. We'll get to that second chance in a moment. Uh, again, I'm going to tease the question that's coming at the end, but I want to get back to livestock. We were a little short there in the program. That's on me. Uh, Joel in Oklahoma has a, a two-parter here. What's the biggest possible threat to the current cattle market? And absent that threat, could this current market last for two to three years due to the massive herd reduction the last few years? Uh, the biggest, biggest threat uh, with the cattle market, it seems to always be something that comes out of left field that nobody saw coming. Um, I... I will admit I've been surprised over the past, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months really, that the demand hasn't, that the consumer hasn't backed away from those prices. Uh, you go back to, you know, mentioning the equity market. I think it it uh, it bears watching the relationship between those two. Uh, the cattle market, um, you know, when when we've had dips in the equity market. Uh, hasn't really seemed to phase the cattle market. So uh, as far as the next two to three years, uh, what's your take? I, it's hard for me to figure out what's going to happen next week. Well, we, we talked about it in, in wheat, <laughs> of, yeah. you know, the rain coming too little too late. However, pastures getting recharged, maybe some regrowth. Some of those pastures that Producers have pulled their livestock off, gives them another option, buys them a little bit of a chance. But when you say buy, we're entering the grill season this weekend. This is the unofficial start to summer. Hamburger might be pretty expensive for some, but the steak's a heck of a lot more. Is it going to take that, I think you said to me, a $20 ribeye before we get the attention of the producer or the consumer? Yeah, well, yeah, and I, I said, you know, the cure for high prices is high prices. Uh, it hasn't cured anything yet, but at some point, um, you know, there might be some destruction of the of the demand, regardless of the size of the herd. Uh, that's that's what rallies are all about. At what point, price-wise, uh, do we kind of see the consumer push push him and, and herself away from the table a little bit? Well, I know uh, I'm expecting to see a, a sale on pork. Uh, again, it's been low values. You talked about that. But Brent in Oklahoma wants to know, why is that cattle and hog spread staying so wide? We know it's there, but why is it staying there? Yeah, well, as I said, uh, uh, cattle just yesterday and today, uh, new contract highs on most months. Same thing with, with the hogs, new contract lows. Uh, most, uh, some of those contracts were down over $3 today. And, and uh, there, there just seems to be no end in sight uh, for the hogs in particular. Cattle have, uh, prices have been high, but uh, have been a little more stable, whereas uh, the hog market has given up, uh, I think after today, it's over 25% 20, of its value going back to the third week of February. So I have, uh, I have customers that call and inquire about cattle hog spread and uh, thankfully, I haven't been very aggressive on it because today was worse than yesterday and worse than the day before that. Day before that. But I think there will probably be some opportunity in, in a trade like that. Uh, it, but I think it would be advisable if you're a speculator in particular to figure out how to do it without having that much exposure, even though that's a spread. Uh, it's, there's still still plenty of volatility to it and plenty of risk. So I think I'd approach it from the, the standpoint where you can build a bullish hog position but not liquidate it if the market goes against you two or three dollars. Maybe you add another position because you're only out a dollar on a covered short put spread, for example. Same thing with the cattle. Mm -hmm. Well, Speaking of options, speaking of missed windows, missed opportunities, this is the question I know is not, uh, Justin's not the only one who has this question. He says, why didn't I sell all my beans for fifteen fifty? He's asking for a friend. Okay. okay. Because there's plenty of people who are feeling 
they've missed their opportunity. You mentioned if there's, an, if there's a little rise, take advantage of that. Uh, I know there's some protection issues that can, can help. But then I also hear from the crowd that says, it's rallied the last, it's rallied counter seasonal and against everything else we've thought the last couple of years, why will it not do it a third? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's an optimistic way to look at it. Uh, and it's, you know, price wise, some of that's water under the bridge at this point. Um, but I think it would, it would a, a, a good way to approach any growing season, in, in my opinion, is make a sale every four weeks, whether you want to or not. You can be as aggressive or passive on re-ownership, uh, depending on your, your sentiment at the time of a sale. So I, I, I do think over the past couple of years, there have been a lot of opportunities and, and the sharp guys, I think, are just consistently not looking at what they might miss out on, uh, but rather look at it as what do I have right now? Because really only one person hits the top. Exactly. You have to be happy you were close to the top. Exactly, exactly. Were you happy there weren't too many hard questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than predicting, you know, something crazy like uh, the Triple Crown or something like that. Sean, yeah. good to see you. Yeah, you too, Paul. Thank Appreciate you so it. Much. Appreciate it. All right. Next week, we are going to look at the work being done to connect that last mile of the digital divide, and we'll have the market analysis of Elaine Cubs. Thank you for joining us here on Market Plus, and have a great week.